And we are live, are guys. Really? Hey, guys, it Welcome is Friday. Four dummies. Four guys in the Scotch Journey. Help me make next Scotch purchase. It's like freaking five o'clock somewhere. Why are it we here? Far, it's far, Thursday. It's <laughs> Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> Thursday. Why, why are we here? Well, we got something special going on today. So we do. I'll start at work. Uh, no, no, no. I got a better reason than that. We've got somebody on live right now, and we are going to be going through some of these whiskeys that this man made for us. Which is awesome. <laughs> Which is awesome. Bring him in. So, Malcolm, welcome to the show. He's there with us. Thank Steph. you very much. Thank you for joining us. Hello. Steph Ridgeway's there with him as well. Where are you guys at? We're sitting here at the distillery in my office in Wick. In Wick. So we're upstairs here in Wick. <laughs> I wish we we're could We're on the top places. of the world, yeah. gentlemen. Top of the world. Everything's downhill from here. <laughs> if we could trade places right now, Malcolm, I would promise you I would take good care of your whiskey there. <laughs> you know, funny enough, Malcolm keeps asking me when he's going to get to Indiana, so maybe we, can, uh, Indiana. maybe we can <laughs> work that out. Thanks, Steph. You make me feel good. We, we got a race coming up in May. So, so, so we're not here just for fun, though. You guys are doing a relaunch of the old Fulton brand, right? Yes. That's right. Yeah. So, which is awesome. We're super excited. We love the distillery. We love everything you guys have put out. So, uh, we're very excited to try some of these uh, new whiskeys from your lineup. We've got a whole slew of people live uh, on the chat right now, and I'm sure they're going to start throwing questions uh, that we need to try to get to as well. <laughs> no, they'll be. They're excited about this. Well, we'll only tell you the good ones. But before we, we oh no, bring in, on uh, the ones us because yeah, we're just yeah. gonna drink whiskey through yeah, those. So right. say whatever you want. Fair enough. <laughs> well, just to, to to let everybody online know, we already pre-poured the fifteen, the OP fifteen, and we're gonna get into this here in just a second. But let's talk about you know the distillery just a wee bit, and, and Malcolm, and and how he got to where he is, what he's doing, and and why the change up you know some of those general questions before we dig in and start drinking yep so you got one okay I, go ahead malcolm tell us about uh you know kind of your background you started it okay yeah, yeah i started just about 30 years ago to be honest and uh i was introduced into the industry by a man called john black and i don't know if you're familiar heard with it, about him but he used to laterally finish his career in tillabardi and john was the manager here at the time and he brought me into the industry and I kind of I've done all aspects of the job, you know. I started up on the shop floor, so to speak, and the stillman, mashman. Uh, I used to look after the warehouses, and for part of my career there, and I used to travel around other distilleries within the group. And in the year two thousand, I was asked to go down to Speyside and look after Knock Do Anok, one of our other distilleries. So I was there from two thousand to two thousand six, and then came back to Pulteney uh, as manager then. So. You know, over the last number of years, I've been back. We've been doing a lot of work and, you know, doing a lot of work, not just in the actual the range and the whiskies that we have. So Pulteney is a, it's a traditional, built in 1826. And we sit right here in the very northeast tip of Scotland. So we've been very remote for a lot of years. It's very rugged. It's windswept. A lot of rain, which, you know, you need for making good whiskey. So there's a lot of that, and over the years we can, we're isolated. It, it makes a kind of independent kind of person, and you know that's what we've got at the distillery here. You know they're very much hands-on, very traditional, very independent, and I think a lot of that is borne out in the actual whiskey, not just the you know the area where we're from, but the guys that are making it as well. That makes sense. So I I've been in my job for a long time, and I've kind of come up through the ranks, kind of like you did, Malcolm. It, do you enjoy your current position? Like, is that the the pinnacle of it? Or do you fondly look back at some of the other jobs that you had, you know, as a match man or in charge of the warehouse? Is there one that you just really enjoyed doing every day? I've, I've, I enjoy it all, to be honest. You know, it's, it's never been a job for me. It's always been, you know, what I do and, and part of what I am. Uh, I've never had a bad day in the office. I've never had a bad day at the distillery. Every day is a learning day, and every day is different. And I have uh, well zero stress in my job, to be honest. It's a trying to it's 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 been very good to me, and I want to be very good to it back. But I mean, there's all aspects that you can enjoy because there's such a variation in what you do. And you know, you come in one day and it's a completely different day from what it was yesterday. And you know, that's the fun thing about it. And you're working with things that are. You know the natural they're, they're all born out from where we are and it makes it very interesting so 
I would say the whole, I mean, the whole aspect is, uh, for me is, is interesting. I can't really, you know, put it down to one thing, to be honest. Like, it's a distillation, pardon the pun, of a lot of things, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Let me ask you, uh, from an Opoli standpoint, though, uh, you, in your position, do you still find yourself doing all those other roles? A lot of distilleries, you know, only have four or six people working, so you got to be ready to sweep the floor or, or run another oh, distillery. I, mean, you know? I, I, I don't mind. I'll sweep the floor. I'll make the coffee. I'll do whatever needs to be done. <laughs> you know, I'm not. You know, Although I sit here in an office, I like a lot of time. I like to be around the plant and doing what the boys are doing. And you know, I haven't got a problem putting on my gloves and pushing right. casks, or, or or going into the warehouses and putting casks away, or taking in a mash or whatever. You know, so it's very much hands on here. And you know, I'm just a guy within a team, and you know, we're a, a cog in a wheel, so to speak. So you just want to keep that wheel turning and do what you can to do. So speaking you of know, your team, how how big is your team there? I know a lot of distillers you talk to you think you know there's massive but you come to find out there's smaller groups i mean how many people do you have working at old Pulteney? no we're quite quite a small outfit on on the production side of things we've got seven guys on shift and then uh, i have an assistant russell and it's myself so there's not nine on production and we have three full-time people in the visitor center and shop because we show people around here and then in the summertime when the season gets busy for for visitors we usually take on another three or four people so it's quite a small team uh Many years ago, I mean, you know, you know, when we had Maltings here, and it would have been a bigger squad. But as time's gone on, the Maltings ceased production in 1926, and you know that was never to fire up again. So it's it runs on about you know around about a dozen people throughout the year. Okay. Speaking of the 1920s, that was about the time your still got put in, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just before the question. I, 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 I just find it super entertaining because it's like something we would do, right? Like you drop the still in and the roof doesn't fit back on. So how are we going to, let's just cut it off. Just cut it off. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hold on, where's the fag packet? Who, who lost the fag packet? The cal calculations are on the back of that. So. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That's, that's, just, that's just Scottish ingenuity and badassery. Uh, uh, I, I feel like there was finest. some duct tape involved, what? if there was duct tape back duct there. Tape. Like. <laughs> Let's have a drop and think about this one, guys, to see what we're going to do. Certainly, certainly th there was going to be no more money invested in it, yeah. for the love of all God. Right. If we're up here. We have whiskey to make. Just get that. And I was exactly. in the still house today, and I was like, oh. And I took a couple of really good pictures of that still that I can send to you up close and personal, where you just see it all hacked off. And when I first met Malcolm and I asked him, about it and i said what kind of still was this this is like two years ago and he looks at me and he says oh it's a pulteney still <laughs> and i'm like is this a trick i don't even know what that is yeah. and he Old told Pulteney me that story and I've been laughing ever since oh pulley definitely has a unique still shape well that's what the bottle that's exactly. that iconic that's shape of the bottle is, is to pay homage to our but, our but, scottish but, badass <laughs> but the bottle goes straight up. It doesn't like yeah, it's not cut off and then it stops. <laughs> yeah. So let's hack it off. Let's let's get into one or two of these and then we'll take a, a mid break. I'm getting break. thirsty. Yeah, I'm like I, I, I accidentally sipped the beginning. So I, I did. I, I was surprised it. that you talked this long. Yeah, without I mean, drinking. I actually have read a couple of the questions, and you know, you guys are. I'm sure Malcolm knows there's at least one or two questions that he could guess that are coming his way. We probably <laughs> okay, just out of the way. Just get him out of the way. Um, but I also want to get into the 15 too. So let's have a drink, and then we'll come back to those obvious questions. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Um, so the the 15 OP 15, it's already launched in Europe, is it? Yeah, it was launched. We launched it last year, uh, July last year in London. And it's slowly uh, been released throughout the world. And uh, I've just returned from a trip in the Far East where we've, we've worked there. So now it's uh, it's you guys now. We're looking forward to introducing the, the new core range to yourselves. So the first one you're going to experience here is the 15 years old. So this started off life in American Oak. So had a number of years in refill American Oak. And then it's been racked. And it's been racked into, uh, first of all, Spanish, okay? Spanish Oak. Uh, XL are also wine treated cask. So it kind of okay. gives it a different dimension there, you know? Okay. It's got a lot of fruit on the nose. Yeah. 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 You know, like apples and mm -hmm. citrus. Like candied so oranges. 
Mm-hmm. So from, um, the, the, from, from the American side of things, you know, it, it really kind of, it's, it's reminiscent of the tide and where we're from. So if you can ask your, your, your viewers, I mean, you, you guys can do it as well. So instead of putting the glass up to your, your nose, I want them to stick to you, stick it up to your ears. <laughs> yeah, so it sounds, sounds like the ocean. Put it in your ears, okay? Like, can you hear the sea? I can hear it singing to me. <laughs> I only have yeah. one gram, too. This is amazing. Yeah, I, can hear, yeah. I hear seagulls. Yeah. Who lives in the pineapple? That's really hard. That's really hard. I think my wife's doing. Yeah. Oh, Lord. What are you doing with this thing? The crazy American crew. So, this is uh, all old Pultonese are bottled at 46% ABV as well, right? Yeah, the 15, the eight, the other two that you're going to experience mm. as well. Yeah, so these are non-chill filtered, and these are natural. natural. Right. <clears throat> is, <throat> is that why Opony bottles at 46? Because they don't, they don't want to not, they don't want to chill filter it. And that's just a decision you've made. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's you know, I mean, currently we all know. I mean, you know, getting a shelf nowadays in liquor stores and supermarkets. I mean, the biggest. The biggest bulk of whiskies now are, are non-chill. Uh, you know, a lot of people, you know, if you're going to chill filter, you're going to remove something. But, you know, a lot of people are looking for that. Well, I know with my these new is. core expressions. Um, yeah, it's with these new core unchill filters. Yeah. Right. And, and I mean, and that's my preference. Honestly, 46 is, is wonderful. You just, when you get down to 40, I'm, I'm so disappointed in a distillery when they bottle something, <clears throat> unless they had to, you know right. what I mean? Right. If it's that old and the angels took that much, I get it. But if you have the opportunity to come in at 46, why? Or, or more. Or more. Why not? <laughs> I, so well, that's, this is really nice. It's okay. Hint, just like a hint of milk chocolate. Too. It's it's old Pony. There's no doubt this about is good. it. You, yep. you can put a blindfold yeah. on and you can take a whiff of this and you're going to get old Pony on it. Steph, what's our price range coming in for this? Do you have any idea? Question. I do, as a matter of fact. Um, <laughs> this is going to, the SRP on this is going to sit on the shelf at about 90, 95 bucks. Okay. Which that's is right idea. in the, that's a 15 year old. Like if you, if you do any price comparison for those distilleries that are actually still like taking advantage of that age statement, that's, that's pretty much down the line. It floats, floats the mainstream of that age statement. Yeah, I, I mean, I never like, I never like to to assume that ninety five dollars is inexpensive for somebody, but in the realm of that particular year, it's an affordable whiskey. Like any any time I'm asking somebody to give me ninety five of their hard earned dollars, I feel like we should be giving them something back. And I think Malcolm and his team have really hit the hit the. This is at full disclosure, oh, guys. Yeah. Just so we know, of the ones that we're tasting tonight, this is my rock star. This is now one of my top two favorite drams in the world. This is a good first uh, yeah. impression. I'm going to tell yeah, you that to much. To be honest right with you. And <laughs> I, I wouldn't, the only problem I'd have with the $95 price range is the bottle's not big enough. So I'm going to go through. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. Not good for anyone. <laughs> well, you just have to hang out. With, you just more often. I might know where we can get some. Yeah, can, uh, can, you, can you put uh, these in one liter bottles for the U.S. market? Yeah. <laughs> They're not on the shelf yet. That's uh, really, really good. It's a, a wonderful nose. It's fruity. There's that, that OP malt that I want in it. Yeah. Um, and that's one of the things I really like about the old Pony lineup is, is the maltiness of it. I mean, I, I, I'm i a malt guy, though. I mean, I'm... Yeah. So I, the question that I had when I was kind of looking through the new lineup, and maybe Malcolm can answer this, is why 15? Why not 12 or, or 14? What, what was it about 15 that you guys enjoyed? You know, we, we one of the things we're looking, you know, to introduce a new range was was talking to people and you know what they wanted and what they kind of were looking for. So we made a conscious decision. It was it's uh, it's quite a brave decision in a way is to change the lineup with the exception of one. And I mean, also what has to come into that is is your stock, what you've got maturing, and what you can you know release and what you can sustain and what you can grow as well. And also, you know, we we don't do the 17 and the 21 anymore and you know you know the 15 and 18 was like a natural strep and bring it up so that you know you can do 15 the 18 and then the 25 as well so it was looking you know a combination of a lot of things and you know you know stock is one of them that you have to you know you have you want to grow something if you're going to change something and introduce something you want to grow it well, you brought I mean, up those. You brought up those two other years. I can't believe you threw that. I was out like, yeah, I was like that. That over. we just uh, attacked 
I that was our plan to get over there. We're gonna own it. Smart bring little. it on. Uh, well, tell your tell your brewers, your viewers, to bring it on. Well, I hope I answered your question. <laughs> so yes, obviously, knowing that we were going to be talking to you, people have uh, thrown those two obvious questions out. There are some some of our subscribers out, uh, and us too. Uh, we're in the boat. Um, Absolutely go through huge some of these? fans of 17 and 21. I mean, I can do a quick rundown of some of the questions we've got on the 17. Sure. So one is why Nick to 17 is cult following. Can you make it for all of the United States? I, let me let me ask a few of these, and you can kind of summarize together. <laughs> um, people are saying that the 17 is very different than the 18. Um, I, got, I got a hiss there. So okay, we're talking. We yeah, can yeah, go. We're good. Good. Okay. Um, yeah. Just a lot a lot of questions. Why the 17? They love it. Um, and then the questions about the price of the 18 versus the 17 seems to be a lot higher than the Yeah, there's a disparity. There, there people are thinking there's a disparity in the price range between the 18 and the 17. But so I'm, I'm going to answer that question. Uh, I don't shoot the maker, okay? <laughs> yeah, don't shoot the maker. And, and before I let Malcolm loose on the why of the 17, but I think that answer was partially questioned when we talked about sustainability and stock. That's the reality of the situation in our world. In Scotch whiskey, a year is a year is a year. We can't go like that and make it go any faster. And there's got to be something that's sustainable. I will let him, um, I definitely will let him uh, expand upon that. But I, I can, uh, on, I'm going to honestly address the price uh, disparity between the 17 and the 18. And I believe the 18 is going to be sitting on the shelves in the US at about a buck 35, a buck 25, mm. something around there if I'm not right. mistaken, which is right down the wheelhouse of any 18s that you look at. Now, if people are looking at the price of 17, which for very, very long, before it became a cult following, and this is just real, was ridiculously underpriced. The fact yes, that you could was. buy a bottle of that 17 year old yeah. for 80 bucks, $90. Yeah. It's just the economy of scale. I, I can't, I mean, it is what it is. I, I wish there was some magic answer, but it's it it never took any kind of price increase over all those years. <laughs> People yeah. say, "Hey, if you had a time machine, what would you do?" I'll well, go buy it. Go back and buy all seventeen. My question wasn't that. My question yeah. is, you you guys are over there, and and you probably know better than anybody. What's the other old Pulteney seventeen that ridiculously underpriced that nobody's talking about? Scotch, right? <laughs> <laughs> you want the you want the the, the you, you can answer you know that one off camera if you want. <laughs> it's an off camera, but you know, and 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 I hope that my answer came across with the sincerity that it was intended. That wasn't, I mean, it wasn't a, it wasn't meant to be any kind of flippant, but it was just cold hard fact. Um, you know, right. we've got this much. It's eighteen. It's the you know the youngest malt. My guess is there's probably some older malt in the eighteen than there was in the seventeen. Um, I like the fact that old in the United States is now becoming something that people are looking for. Where if I had to talk to you five years ago, we were everybody's best kept secret. Mm -hmm. So you know, I, I mean, to be honest, the the entire whiskey world is getting that way. You know, I mean, there's a lot That's of true. distilleries, Very true. Japanese, American, Scottish, Irish that are that are having to kind of relook at their lineup and figure out, you know, what's sustainable. Yeah. How are we going to do this? And so you have, to, I mean, you, have to, you have to, yeah, you have to. And you um, know, if I could, if I could get, if I could make it different, I would, but it, it's just the cold, you know, there is a business, which I, I, again, I don't want to steal the romance, but there's a little bit of economy that we have to look at here. Steph, you're right. This is yep. gunpowder right here. Yeah. Um, this, it's delicious. I drank mine. Yeah. I mean, honestly, that, that last round was just. The, the I didn't get any of my glass. Can you pour me some? Absolutely perfect. <laughs> so what I'm what I'm hearing is that I need. Obviously, there needs more for review. Then well, we're, we're drinking all that 15. <laughs> this is delicious. The 15, I'm I'm yeah, definitely going. Really to, when I see it in the shelf, I will be buying. We're it. supposed to save some for review. Oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> oh, there's not. Oh. Crap. Oh shit. Sure. <laughs> Uh, All right. uh, it, it happens. It happens. Kudos to the 15, sir. It's really good. Uh, Very good. Uh, Excellent. Thank you very much. Thank you. And we'll let his, we, I'm going to be with his team tomorrow. We'll make sure we show him this video. They need to understand that, as Malcolm said, it's, you know, Malcolm might be having the rudder, but it's those guys. Yeah, two of us involved in it. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. well, and, and you we're kind of moving into the discussion of the 18 as we go, and we'll, we'll pour that in a second. But some of the comments around that are, um, Apparently, some people online have had the 18, and they've compared it to the 17, 
and it's a completely different bottle. Is that true? Or can you kind of tell us how you went about formulating the 18 to differentiate it and just essentially justify the higher price than over the 17? Well, I mean, I mean, to be honest, like, you know, I mean, when we, we decided that we were going to change from the 17, you know, it's you want you want to do something different. You you know you want to have the, the consumer to have a different experience of Pulteney. So really, there was no point in doing something that was going to be exactly the same. Just okay, a just a just a different number. You want to have them a different. You want people to have a different experience on the on a different on the new lineup. You know, so I mean, it, it's all down to you know positioning and warehousing how it's. Mature. It's matured it kind of differentiates from the 17 to the 18 uh length of time in the cast because the 18 again it started off life in american oak and then it was racked into spanish uh, you know xl or wine treated cask but then it comes in the you know it's down to the power of the warehouse and where yeah well so it, it was a slight you know a change on the angle from the 17 it gives it a different totally different identity and a different profile so how is that different than the 17 it, uh, it, it it's down to the positioning in the warehouse you know how how, how i've moved things about i mean you know Interesting. the warehouses talk to you. yeah the warehouses talk to you they, they they you know they all have their little wee part and a lens that something slightly different to the whiskey that another part of the warehouse won't give you so, so it's all it's, it's getting to know that and changing it around so so to me, this is the romance. This is where the magic happens. That you have the 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 distillery manager and our master blenders who are, you know, they're conducting a symphony. And everywhere you go in the warehouse, something is getting a little bit off. It's a little bit different. It's completely different. Um, but I suspect your answer yeah. is going to be the same because I, I had this answer queued up or this question queued up for maybe in the, when we get to to the twenty five. When when we read the. The, the maturation and finishes on all three, the 15, 18, and 25, they're all the same as far as uh, the caskings that you guys list. So what differentiates yeah. them other than the number? And when I heard between 17 and 18 is, is really the position in the Dunnage House and where you're moving it around. But is it, are they also spending different amounts of times in those barrels? It's not just uh, a yes. number. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I mean they're all. It's not. It's not down to a set time or a number, you know. So they've all had different varying lengths in American oak and then Spanish oak. So, you know, there's there, there's that to it. I mean, it's not. It's not down to a number, and then we shift it. I, I want to clarify just on one little point, and I think Malcolm will agree with me here. Uh, just so we're all on the same page, we're like none of these whiskeys are a finish. Everything that we're doing involves further maturation. Further maturation. Okay. Because if you're if you're okay. if you're in that that second round for anything north of probably like let's say for sake of argument two years, two years and six months, that's a further maturation. You're you're picking up a right. lot of different quality from the wood than you are on a mere finish. Not that one is better than the other. It just something different to the whiskey. And here at Old Pulteney, where it's all about further maturation. So the second round of cask is much longer than just a mere 18 months or anything south of two, of two years. Got it. Okay. You know what? I just, just for uh, educate me here, Steph and Malcolm, um, define the, the, the line between finish and maturation. And that's this question that's, that's I've always wondered. Question. You read it, you, you read these, you know, descriptive. Yeah. Yeah. What, what do you think? There's probably not a definitive answer and say that, you know, once it reaches a certain age, it's gone from a finish to a further maturation. Okay. But mm. within the industry, it tends to be, you know, anywhere from about, you know, a year to as Steph says, you know, two years, two and a half years to be a finish. And longer than that, you're talking not a finish, you're you're talking about a further maturation. A second maturation. I mean the definition of a maturation, yes, a second a further or a second maturation. I mean, the definition of, of, of matured whiskey is three years old. Okay. okay so you know you're, you're you know you're, you're talking over two years over two and a half years you are in essence further maturing it you're not finishing and it, it might sound a little like smoke and mirrors but i believe when you talk about you know if, if you start with the premise the foundation that 70 let's say for conservatively conservatively 70 to 80 percent of the flavor of that whiskey is derived from the cask that you're aging it in, then it begins to make a little bit more sense that the more time the whiskey spends in that particular style of oak, it's going to be pulling more 
of what we want it to give. And it can also, you know, if it's a further maturation, like we're putting it in to say, you know, within, in our case, first fill sherry butts, where that whiskey is interacting with the wood in terms of how that grain has been opened by the Oloroso sherry. So there's, you know, it's, it's, you know, I talked earlier about, I don't know what's out of it, but this is where the romance and the magic happens. And, you know, yeah. I'm certainly not out. It's this guy and, and his team, but, you know, we, we know that if this is what we wanted this whiskey to taste like once it gets to you, this is where we need to have it in this wood and for how long and where we want that interaction with the grains. Yes. Yep. Good totally answer. Okay. Totally. Well, I get to well keep said. my job for well another said. Well said. Well said. <laughs> I, I will say that anytime I get an answer from anybody at Old Pulteney about the whiskey itself, the, the casks are very important to everybody there. I mean, and, and everybody that I've talked to has hammered that home. Yeah. So, do you have somebody that's specifically in charge of of selecting the casks, where they come from? I'm sure that you have pretty stringent requirements on them. We, yeah, we do. I mean, we, we, you know, over the years, you get to know what, you know, suits your spirit and where what doesn't. And it's one man's meat is another man's poison. But I mean, we have preferred suppliers of American oak and we have per, preferred suppliers of salmon. So, you know, it is fundamentally one of the most important parts of the whole process to make sure that your cast selection is top notch. And we spend a lot of time and, you know, also a lot of money making sure that our wood <clears throat> policy is is 100% is, is, is how we like it. Well, let's get into let's this get 18. 18. Yeah. Well, the 18 is uh, delicious. Yeah. So, so it is very different. Than very today. different. I mean, it's not just three years older. <laughs> no, it's, I mean, it's, it's, it's got its own story to tell as well, you know? Uh-oh, hold on uh -oh. a second. Uh -oh. I, did, uh -oh. I did something. You guys can't watch that. Sorry, I hit the button by accident. My fault. What are you doing? I, I well, was Drew's, down. Drew's messing stuff up. Drew's already oh. trying to watch the replay. Oh, right. okay. hey, it's all word. about Drew loves at the beginning. I can't do this. is copy of Drew's face. <laughs> Drew, 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 and then all of a sudden, he's bust thrown. You're excited. He's got a whole new team. Drew's, in, yeah, Drew's in whiskey timeout. Whiskey timeout. <laughs> no, no whiskey for you. No problem. <laughs> I'll see you guys in a minute. I mean, honestly, he's I'm like, yeah, but yeah, exactly. He's like, fine, I figure out this tech stuff on your own then. It's not a sweet. <laughs> You don't, you don't want us to do that. You really don't. I think the 18 and has you, a much heavier you sherry in You really don't want me to do it. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I do want you to do that. Right, so, Malcolm, yeah. can you tell us what, what you were aiming for on the 18 as opposed to the 15? Okay. How, yeah. How you intended them to be different. Yeah, and, and you've just hit the nail on the button. It has a bit more sherry influence, okay? It has a bit more Spanish to it, okay? So yeah. for me, I mean, you've got you've got more, yeah. you've got the chocolate, you've got the tobacco, okay? You've got a bit of spiciness. You just like a cooked spice as well. You've got a nice cooked spiciness there on your palate as well. Tannins, maybe a wee bit of kind of slightly higher, but slightly different from the 15. But it, it, it is quite, it's against creamy. Coming through there, underlying, you've got a... Like a creme brulee, like a like a, a creme brulee, heavy it toasted feels sugar. Feels drier too. I mean, so yeah. that's so sugar notes sugar. from the Spanish oak. Yeah, I, almost I, like I find a little, and I mean this in a good way. It's almost like a little bit more, like you said, drier. I say like, like a little of a string. Yeah, <laughs> I mean it yeah. because it, my mouth dries up, and when that when I when it dries up, that's when to me is reminiscent of the 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 casks that are maturating in the sea air up here in our. If our, our provenance, our terroir, because anytime if you think of if you have salt in your mouth and then it, you, you dries up and then it waters again, that's I think the 18 shows through pretty evident, you know, that these casks that's are spending point. north of 18 years mm -hmm. and it is the salt sea air infiltrates everything. Oh, yeah. Man, I'm, I'm already having a tough chance. Both of these Time. are delicious. I'm, I'm I would say the 18 has got even more chocolate notes. Yeah, to it. just more, it's, it feels a total yeah, sugar. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's, yeah. better, it's better layered. It's got more co complexity to it. There's, a, there's, a, there's a different complexity to it on the 18 as to the 15. There's a, it has its yeah. own complexity. Yeah, the, the 15 is more of a uh, – it's a dessert tram. I mean, it's, it's very sweet up front. I, I really enjoy it. Like, I could – Knock back two or three of those, no problem. Yeah. This one I want to kind of take my time a little bit more with. It's got a lot more depth and complexity. It's very enjoyable. I could spend some time with this. Yeah, I could too. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing wrong with if that. If I had all. to. No, yeah, this would be something you could definitely take 
pour pour a dram. It's sit there by the fire, sit there. And, and it's device. a good price too. I mean, it's a reasonable price for what that's. Well, I mean, you're right, but uh, I'll I'll flip the coin and, and play devil's advocate and argue. You you know what everyone's going to say is, you know what? I used to find the 21 for that price. No. You yeah. you absolutely did. And and you you're did. And did. That, that's the right answer. So that's the answer to that that statement. You did, but it was also grossly undervalued. You, you know what? I used to get gas for 90 cents yeah. a gallon too, and I don't get that anymore either. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, I mean, I wish you... I Sneaker could, bars used to be a quarter. What do you want me to do about it? <laughs> <laughs> no, and, and no, and no offense to every, no, anyone, but I, yeah, that you, you absolutely did, and, and it is what it is, but I think, no. you know, and yes, that you can still find some things on the shelf that are, and we all do it. We're all on search for unicorns reasonably yeah. priced and we all get together and we talk uh, behind the scenes. You'll never guess what I found this bottle for. It is what it is. I'm just signaling these guys, the water, man, really opens up yeah. the flavors. It really? explodes now of more richness, more fruit, more that chocolate that let that, you know, like you eat chocolate and the aftertaste is there, the chocolate, yeah. aftertaste, it's there and it's nice, man. It really helps mm -hmm. the base, the base of the, of the malt there. Oh it does gosh. get creamier, that's for sure. Yep. I'm a, for me, the, yeah. fif, the fifteen is a that could be my my walk and buy. That's that's my regular drinking whiskey now. That's not that I, I, well, it's not my Tuesday whiskey, but it might be my Saturday afternoon whiskey. <laughs> like I'm not I'm not celebrating laundry with the fifteen because at ninety bucks a bottle, you know, I do a lot of laundry. But, <laughs> The 18 is definitely more of an occasion dram for me. You, so our viewers out there so far, both 15 and 18 are yeah. amazing. They're really yeah. good. They're yeah, well, I'm looking yeah. forward to the review. So you guys stand by on that. Okay. Just, uh, okay. Just, okay. Pretty proud. Okay. Just to say it right now, stuff I'm thinking about, I get the feeling that we could show up in New York and just knock on your door on Saturday and start drinking whiskey. Is that okay? <laughs> <laughs> Why you're doing laundry? Because I can tell yeah. you, if we show up in pretty Indianapolis much, and knock much. on our door, uh, we'll start drinking whiskey. We're just going to show up with our dirty clothes and be like, "Hey, we get some laundry, dude. Get some scotch." I, I, and I have, I have, I have laundry in my unit in oh, New York, and by New York in. standards, that's like I live in a palace. Yeah, so bring true. the laundry. I got the We're all good. So, and I, while I have pizza, it's not deep fried. So. Oh yeah. So we, we've got two more to go through. I want to ask a, an educational question that I read from an article that you had made a comment in. I don't even know how long ago, Malcolm. But I read a comment that you made on an interview that said that it had to do with the fermentation length and what fermentation length does to the flavor. You would said if you ferment longer, you get this. If you ferment shorter, you get that. And I never heard of that. And I was really intrigued by that comment. I thought I, I have an opportunity to, to literally ask you about it. So could you expound on that for yeah. me? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The uh, short of the and, and uh, well, a rule of thumb: short of the fermentation, you're going to get more more real cereal derived spirit. If you can give that longer, you know, you're going to start getting more esters, more fruits. You know, we're fermenting minimum here of about seventy two hours, and some of the washbacks are getting up to about one hundred and fifteen hours. You know, oh. so it really you know, so slow uh, fermentation that we have here at Fultney. And it, it certainly makes a difference. It's interesting. I mean, that's one of the, the things that I've never considered when it comes to whiskey. I mean, we're, we're, we're four years into our journey here, and we've learned so much, but there's so many little intricacies about what you do to make your whiskey special, whether it's where the cask is in the Dunwich house or the fermentation. or It's just interesting to me. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I'm not saying I'm doing it right or wrong. I mean, everybody has their own way to do that. <laughs> well, I'm, doing it, I'm, doing it my, I'm doing it my way, you know, and, you know, hopefully that, you know, People enjoy what I do, and it, it, it's kind of born out from that. So, I mean, for consistency, I'm trying to do everything the same all the time for the, you know, for the various expressions that we've got. So, so that that brings begs a question. So, your <laughs> <laughs> so, so didn't uh, answer the question. Uh, uh, Love the whiskey. I'm no, just kidding. He did. <laughs> so, are are all of your mash bills the same? You're doing the same mash bill every day. Yeah, yeah, yeast, yeah, the same one. Everything. I am, so you're, yeah. you're, I, I tweak it slightly according to the malt that I'm using, you know, when it comes in because there's a bit of variation.
yeah. there. So the actual you know, water temperatures and volumes and things like that, I'm tweaking that slightly different as, as, as time goes on. But in the terms of it. mash build. But the mash build is the same. It's constant. It's the same all the time. I don't deviate from that. So, so everybody understands for your viewers that might be new to the category. There's only really one mash bill in and Scotch it's, whiskey. It's yeah. barley. It's single, right. It's single malt barley. 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 Um, but it's just, if we want to go barley geek, what uh, what strain are we using right now? We're, we're using there. There's there's a couple of strains, Chronicle, but we've been, we've been using you know trying different varieties, Pipette and Laureate. So there's a few on the go at the moment. Uh, we've just come off a few years ago. Optic Optic was a very strong uh, dominant variety that you know most people used and we used that for a number of years. But this last number of years, last two three years, we've been trying out new new strains that you know hopefully will take over the mantle as Optic's been in the past. It's all about the yield. It's not really about the flavor. You know, the, you know, 15, 18, 25 years on, you know, the variety of malt really doesn't have any influence on it. Uh, if it does, you talk, it's kind of, you know, very difficult to detect. But, it, you know, when you bring it down to the distillery, it's all about the yield and, you know, the, the spirit that it's going to produce for every ton of malted barley that you mash. So, you know, the, the strain and the variety has a big influence on that. I would imagine if you were that good, it'd be like, you know what, that that's a good dram, but that barley. That was my question when, when I asked uh, about mash. If you want to impress your friend, if you want to impress your friends, that's the way they go. That yeah. barley's about three years older than I thought it was going to be. So it's a good know, dram. Yeah. The, the protein content in that really. That was drove on the south side right. of the hill and not the north side. Yeah. <laughs> and I bet I would, I would lay money that we've all been in contact. Every your viewers, yeah. us, if somebody that wants to talk about yeah. that, and we're like, yeah. okay. Uh, you're right. What, it's barley great. strain and what yeast you're using. Yeah. And then you well, that, so that was exactly my question. So the, does, you, you're saying the yeast strain doesn't really matter from a flavor perspective, but it does affect the yield and all those kind of things. Uh, we kind of hear. We, he, we hear you. Okay. You're getting sketchy. Okay. So the, so from a mash bill, that was my, my question. I know it's all malted barley, but you're saying the strain of the yeast or a strain of the um, grain doesn't really matter that much. It's primarily just the yield that you get from it. Does it change the yeah, flavor I mean, of the whiskey? Well, you know, somewhere along. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh -oh. I think uh -oh. we're losing them a little bit. Uh oh. Uh -oh. It is a long way People up. People are getting home from work. Really far up there. Uh, did we? Did we lose them? No, they're they're still on, but there something's going on there. Did you pull your microphone out? It's no, a long way no, out there. No, they're on. It's just, I think the internet's starting to break up on them. So uh -oh. we may have to call them back. Let's see what happens here in a second. Give them a chance to come up. We still got two more scotches to go through. I know. We got to get them back on the line. And it's already poured. I got questions about the, the barreling. <laughs> oh, no. I'm going to mute them for uh -oh, a second. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Well, well, I'll tell you what. While uh, Drew's trying to do tech stuff and get them back, Mark and I will entertain you yeah. with some fun stories. How about that? Yeah, well, I, I address some of these questions. I see uh, uh, everybody loves the 21 and 17, and, and yeah, we do too, but, yeah. you know, I, reality is reality. So uh, I'll tell you what, I, you know, I, I've always thought that the, the 17 Ooh. and the 21, I've got, a, I've got a fondness in my heart for old people. You, you know, I, I really do. And I'm not mad at them that they're changing the lineup because, I mean, it is what it is. And they're not going away. I mean, it's not like Japanese distillers who are like, well, we'll see you in 12 years, right? Yeah, <laughs> that's correct. I, I mean, they're, they're kind of redoing some stuff uh, to, to make it better for them. And to be fair, to be honest about it, a lot of distillers are like, you know what? I don't have enough old stuff. You're all getting NAS, right? That's true. And instead of that, old Pulteney's like, you know what? Instead of the 17, I'm giving you 18. And instead of the 21, I'm giving you 25. I'm going to reformulate. Yeah. To, to me, that's actually pretty awesome. Right. And I got to be honest, mad at them for at the all. two that we've tried so far, it's not like I'm disappointed here. Kids. You knew. I mean, no. I, 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 will, I will flat out say, I can't wait to review the 15. The 15, Steph was not lying. It, it was really good. I'm thinking uh, 18. The, the 18 was good. It It's more of a, a slow sipper, though. It is it's a, a very sipper. different it's, style. It's so complex. It's so deep that you really got to be careful. Uh, about I, I was actually, you know, when we were when we were kind of looking into this and reading the tasting notes and stuff, what, what they matured it in, you know, the ABV, all of that stuff. 
I was kind of thinking, you know, these are kind of apples to apples. It's going to sit in the barrel a little yeah. bit longer. It's going to be the same thing, but no. just a little bit older, right? No. And it, it is totally <laughs> it not. Is not. You know, right. I mean, they're they're very different. Yeah. Very different. Uh, which I was surprised. I, I am also interested in the fact that, you know, I mean, they, they put it in the same barrels. They kind of did the same thing. But it's just about where they stuck it in the Dunwich House. Right, like that's that's really what now, I know. That's a, I know that's a huge thing in Kentucky because it's hotter. I'm surprised right. it makes a difference. Well, I mean, but you get air, different airflows, different. You know, I, see, I mean, yeah. there's still temperature variation. Imagine the relationship right? he's got to have with that stinking dungeon. I mean, he, he literally has to get intimate with this building and he knows the air this that corner. Building. I mean, this corner makes a whiskey taste but, like this. But that's why no, you, the you person that you're wanting charge has done those jobs before. You know what I mean? I mean so he like, understands how the wood is going to affect that whiskey, the warehouse how manager. where it's positioned in the warehouse is going to affect that whiskey, whiskey uh, um, which Captain I think Man. is really interesting. Yeah. I mean, that is a master craftsman, right? Yeah, absolutely. So what, what do we got going on here? Keep talking, so, boys. Mm. She's, com she's coming back in. So, outside. yeah, see, look at uh, – well, Just yeah. raised some great comments at that. The OP18 price is right on point with the 18 price. I mean, it – and that's just where 18 year olds are going. Kids. Yeah. I hate this. I mean, it, it costs them a certain but amount a to let them sit in a warehouse for 18 years. That's and also, it's supply so, and demand. Right. I mean, so I can't believe that. Too. It, I mean, it, it doesn't things. cost them that much more to make the 18 than the 17. So, Whiskey Bowman says that, you know, it's 30 pounds more than Glen Going, Glen Grunt, Easton. Here's what I'm saying. Maybe those three are underpriced. So you should probably buy some. Right. Or how long <laughs> is before those three jump up to that 30? So right. I, I mean, you're, hey, that's a good price. It's a good deal. You know what I mean? Like, I, I don't necessarily think that they're overpricing it. We'll get I, I think that, we'll you know, fine. honestly, I've we'll actually said phone. something but about these two being underpriced first. for their 18. I, and I think they are. You know, I, it just kind of is what it is. You look at ridiculous uh, yep. prices, uh -oh. you know, on. Uh, We're changing up, kids. Yep. We got our we, we called her on speakerphone, so Steph, All right. are you there? Can you hear us? We can hear you. Can you hear us? Yeah, we got you. Absolutely. Well, you know what? We're gonna make this happen. Everybody, we're so sorry. Technical difficulties in Wick. It happens. Technical difficulties in Wick. You know what? Luckily you guys make good whiskey and people will really yeah. overlook it. The, the three phone lines up to Wick got uh, <laughs> got overloaded now, so yeah, exactly. I guess somebody you know what? Somebody outside was trying to call an Uber, and our uh, Wi-Fi got. <laughs> <laughs> Those were the two I was thinking too. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's so sure. while while we were trying to get through this little hiccup of techni uh, technical difficulties, we poured the Hutter, and completely and utterly different. Um, obviously, what we the heck is we going talked on? to you guys Whoa. a little bit before that we had we had actually had some of this last night. Um, so we we're kind of prepared for this one, but this one definitely stands. Outside the regular core line, so this is this is different. Take it from there, Malcolm. That's all you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's just different. Yeah, it's, I mean, this was made with the uh, with the same only barley and cane, and it's not HD, but we've given it a name Hunter. I mean, told me the story since Hunter Street, which in turn was named after uh, a guy called Captain Joseph Hunter, and Joseph Hunter was very instrumental in the. The fishing industry in Scotland here many, many years ago. And he was a map maker and he allowed a guy called uh, William Johnson Pulte, who we take our name after, and a civil engineer called Thomas Telford. It allowed them to establish all these harbours on the east coast of Scotland for the growth of the fishing industry. So it was in homage to him that you know, we, we brought out this, this new this new knowledge state of whiskey. Now, it kind of harks back to the days of, of Pulte many, many years ago when, you know, we had our own maltings on site and, you know, Pulte whiskey a long time ago was very heavily treated like, like most others. So, so this one, we, we, it started off life again in, in uh, American Oak and it's been racked into cast that previously it held uh, heavily treated spirits, heavily treated whiskey. So you, you've got that, you've got that twist on it, you know, you've got that sort of like the campfire, the kind of the wet leather, Couple with that, you've got the characteristics of, of you know, Fulte as well, you know, the sweetness, the floral, the estuariness, and also the, the kind of salty, briny, kind of coastal expression that goes on there too. So it, it's, you know, it's, it's highlighting the, you know, the influence that a cask will have as well. So it's, you know, all the phenolics is derived from the wood, and then not out the spirit that we, that we produce. Okay. Well, 
Okay. So let me let me ask you. I, I I'm not I'm not expecting you to answer this, but the hunter, it's uh it's finished in, in a cask that previously held peated whiskey, right? <laughs> All right. Question. We, we got that. So so the question is, what peated whiskey did it used to hold? So you can't tell what <laughs> distillery, but it's within your group. So if, if you know the group that makes Old Pulteney, maybe you can kind of infer certain yeah. distilleries yeah, that make. Yeah, yeah. I think you do. I think we need so, to. So we're drinking that in about a week, right, Steph? <laughs> uh, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> so just to be fair to all of our viewers, we're supposed to be meeting Steph in uh, Chicago for Whiskey Fest here next week. So let's all make sure that she comes home from Scotland. <laughs> yes. You about to do something over here? Well, it, you know, Malcolm brought up the, his, you know, a little bit of his, his upbringing history of going through um, those other distilleries, and I had read that about him, and it was interesting watching the history of that distillery um, that is now Anak, right, that, that produces Anak. So just trying to read through that history line of what's happened in that distillery, it was kind of interesting to me. I was talking about it offline before we started the show. And asked Sean, I'm like, well, do you know what really happened to that story and how it got there? So it was kind of fun. But you, it sounds to me, Malcolm, like you enjoyed your time there because it was right for you and your family at the time. Yeah, pretty much. You know, it was, uh, I mean, the kids were the right age for schooling. And it was, uh, you know, it's, it's a fantastic story and a, a great place to live, you know. And, uh, you know, my kids kind of, you know, two life experiences, they benefited from it. And, also, you know, my experience and my career, I benefited greatly from that as well, you know, so, um, you, know, they, you know, there's been a lot of work done it that they not do, and, you know, the whiskey that I come right now, they're absolutely fantastic as well, you know. Okay. Hey, hey Steph, give me a second. I'm going to call you on this laptop so we can get you louder, so I'm going to call you right back in like 30 seconds. Yeah, that'll make it better. Yeah, I'm going to call you on your phone, though. Well, I feel like this is going to cost me a lot of money. Nah. <laughs> it's all no. right. Scott from Scott's Chest Dummies is paying for it it's for right you. Right, five bucks. That's like, that's like 27 seconds for the call, right? <laughs> Tom and Scott, thank you guys for the, the uh, yeah. super chat. Heck Seriously. yeah. And it's Tom, we'll, as soon as we hey. can. Oh, hey, gotcha. Hello? That's mute. Can you hear us? Yep, can hear you just fine. Much wow, better. That's better. That's better. Incredible. Yeah. Well, yeah. it, it, it's, it's getting more fun here. Now the laptop's crashed entirely. Okay, okay. Well, you're not supposed to pour whiskey on the keyboard. That's the Northern Scotland we know. So, I'm, I'm just looking at and now I'm like, great. I'm up here in Wicked. I don't even have a laptop. But you know what? There's worse places that I could be talking to worse people. So um, to all your viewers, please apologize. Apparently, I didn't feed the hamsters that run my lab. <laughs> All right. so. Well, we got it working now. The, the people are saying the audio is much better, so we can yeah. continue this conversation. Yeah, let's, let's talk about the hunter. All right. right. So we went from the 15 to the 18, great, greater. Now we're done. I drank all mine. The hunter. And it's, drank it? it's a, <laughs> but it's a completely different whiskey. It's different whiskey. Talk about it real quick, Malcolm. Yeah, no, it was. I mean, it was the idea. It was the intention that, you know, a different whiskey. To say it was something that you know, in a way, it was kind of looking back to the way things used to be here many, many years ago when we, when we did our remote things. 
So the intention was deliberate that it has to be different, you know. We wanted something that's going to have a twist on it, and, you know, a different dimension. It's something that, you know, as a consumer, you know, they're not people aren't familiar with with totally as uh, the phenolic side of things. But it was all about balancing that. I mean, you know, we didn't want to kind of overpower things and have too much of the phenolics. We wanted the balance that we could, you know, we could experience like totally, you know, the spirit of totally, the character of totally, where it's from. And also the you know the, the smokiness, the campfire, the you know the kind of damp leather that kind of idea, you know, and, and, and give a different dimension to the palate. So am I getting a little bit of kippery flavor on the nose and kind yeah. of just that? <laughs> yeah, possibly, yeah, possibly. <laughs> yeah, I think you hit that. <laughs> so what's the price point, <laughs> Steph? Uh, have you got fish tea and not the nerds? <laughs> <laughs> we got the special bottling, guys. Please don't do that because now everywhere I go, people are going to go, we're going to go fish tea. Yeah. Say, Steph, what's the price point going to be when this hits the uh, shelves here in the States? Uh, between 60 and 70. So right, right in the line with your some good, good uh, non age statement. NAS. Mm -hmm. Right. I find it interesting because last night when we had a dram, and Steph, you said before we even got online that we're like kids at Christmas, right? We're like, we can't put it down. Uh, so so we had a dram of this last night just to kind of test drive it, see what's up. And uh, I, I, I found it not hitting the old Pulteney line. Like it, it just didn't seem like right. it was in line with everything else. But now, after tasting the 15 and the 18, I totally taste Old Pulteney. Oh, it's, it's definitely it's there. It's totally I mean, there. When we were here yesterday, <laughs> you could tell it's Old Pulteney, but it's just not it's something different. It's definitely yeah. outside the mainstream of Old Pulteney, that's yeah. for sure. Yeah, and I mean, that was the intention. You know, that was the intention. You've still, you still got the DNA of where we're from. You know, you're still experiencing that, but it's, you know, it's a different dimension. It's something new for Pulteney in terms of modern times, but, you know, in a way, it's not. You know, it's go back to the old days. Yep. What I think is kind of fun with this one is that, you know, we never, outside of the, you know, the inspiration for this, and, and some of your fans that are listening now might recall the um, the 1989 vintage that we produced a, a couple of years back, which, which like, received with rave reviews, um, a lightly peated, well, the malt's not peated, but was, was uh, uh, right. it was uh, yeah. aged in, in heavily peated casks. That was the inspiration for this. So that was a hard to come by expression. I mean, it was pricey, you know, it's still on the shelf for north of 250 US dollars. Um, so now we've actually put something into the range, which gives those, you know, as all due respect, smokeheads, peatheads, uh, somebody that likes a little bit of smoke, we've now added that to our range. So I'm really excited that we now kind of have something across the board for all palettes. It's definitely different, and, and I'll give you that. It stands out there, and I'm enjoying it. It's just, it's not the old pull need of the 15 and 18. It's definitely outside of it. And yeah. kudos for you for giving a shot. I'm curious. You didn't get into details. Maybe you don't have the exact numbers or anything, but how much time, uh, you know, percentage-wise, is it spending in in the peated, ex-peated casks, I should say? Um, probably about 25% of its time is in the oh. peated casks. Okay, so. okay. I, I'm really digging this today. All right, well, so hold on yeah. a second. We have to pause a second. Tom has been right. asking. He sent he sent us a super chat, and he wants to know he, about Stroma. Do it. I already found oh, it. So we have a, a subscriber who gave us a super chat, donated some money towards this this whole and show. And he'll be there in Chicago. And he'll be in Chicago. Steph, you'll get a chance to meet Tom. Tom he'll be drinking Stroma with us. There you, oh, go. there you go, Tom. Oh. He wants to know more about Stroma and if you could give him some details, Malcolm. While we pour the twenty-five. Animated. While we pour the twenty-five. Okay, uh, the stroma, yeah, yeah. I've just been remaking some stroma this week, so. Um, okay, I can't go to the same of the, the cool. actual, the bill of it on, on the ingredients, okay? Um, proprietary. Yeah, that's, proprietary. That's, that's, oh. that's, uh, that's closely guarded, you know, that's it. It's the James Bond moment in life, you know, <laughs> he's up on Calica, his phone would explode in his hands and he would, wouldn't have a bad experience from it, but, but well, we, uh, Stroma, well, first of all, it takes its name from a small island up the Cape and uh, it's an uninhabited now, but everybody came up there in the 50s. 
but it's, it's uh, a liqueur at 35 percent by volume okay there's a lot of lovely things in it but I mean, essentially it's 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 honey and, and whiskey based you know so you're gonna get all the spices out there you're gonna clove you know you're gonna get the elements of, of, of uh, single malt as well it's a very versatile drink i mean on its own it was a standalone drink with ice it's very very good uh, you can mix with it you know there's some of the mixologists now are doing some wonderful cocktails with strober and you know also you know cooking as well you know you can you can you can cook with it as well and, and uh, I like it. so it's a very versatile drink uh kind of suits all palates and, you know um we, we do quite well with it. it's all small batch i mean it's not something that we do a lot of all the time but you know, so, year of the year we'll do small batches so you start with aged uh opaltony and then add to it to uh, create the the liquor ingredients to it yeah okay yeah. <laughs> okay so far i'm really enjoying the new lineup malcolm really good stuff mixes this up by hand in the filling station oh, on yeah. the distillery ground oh, it's all oh so it's like so you have i assume you have a recipe that you can't disclose but oh, then you can yeah, tweak I, I, based I, I, on no come on <laughs> please tell me you're wearing a kilt when you do it nobody's watching this it's just it's just the four of us or six of us talking together Nobody's watching this. <laughs> Is there anybody listening? Nobody's listening. Not anymore. We need to put a <laughs> webcam on him when he's doing this. Hey, can we send you a Malcolm, can we send you a GoPro and you can kind of shoot it back to us so we can edit some video? Yeah, I want to see how this is done. <laughs> ah, all right, that sounds good. We can't, we can't use a computer, obviously, right? Right. So, so Steph, you have a chore. You need to do some video for us tomorrow, some vlogging, and then we'll Give it to me in Chicago, and we'll edit it and make it look pretty cool. Okay, so. Okay, okay, okay. okay. We'll see what we can do, okay? <laughs> right. So, so I'm a, uh, so Malcolm, I'm a chemical engineer, and you know, um, I really get into the whole distillation process. So I got to ask you a couple questions about the distillation okay. and the barreling. So I've read that we are that typically or historically, Opoli has barreled at a little bit higher ABV than than most um, distilleries. Is, th is that still true? And is there a reason for that? Yeah, I mean, it's, well, it's something we've always done, to be honest. We've always, you know, we've always put in the bar on the receiver strength. We've never, you know, not for many, many, many years, in fact, the whiskey wouldn't be on the market, you know, when we've reached to 63.5 and put in the cask at that. So it's always been at receiver strength. And it does follow a different maturation profile, and it does, if we were to reduce it 63.5 and mature, I mean, the whiskey would be different. So it's something that, you know, we'll maintain doing because it's, you know, we feel it works for us. So that you would, you do it at whatever, whatever strength that comes in, or is it 68 or? Yeah, it's, 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 it's usually always around about 68.5 to, to, to kind of 69. And so all of your uh, <coughs> cut points on front and back are, our heads and tails are, are the same for every batch, no matter what. It's, is it based on temperature or ABV or what's it, the? It, it's it's based on temperature strength. Right. Okay. So I, you know, I was wondering if being farther north that you would tend to lose more alcohol per year, but if it's what you've always <laughs> done, and it's going to completely change your barreling, then I can completely see why that would not yeah, be good. I, I mean, I, I, you know, there's a lot of things you'd like to try and change, but there's, lots of, there's a, quite a number of things that you don't mess with. Yeah. <laughs> 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 All right. I, I'm sitting here. Uh, I, I just had a sip of the 25 while while Andrew was talking, and I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to break it to my wife that we can't retire because I have to drink this every day. Holy <laughs> oh, shit! Well, hold on your hats and hold on your seat when you do this. It's going to change your life forever. <laughs> it is, man. I don't know. Hey, guys, this, I, want, I want to just interject here to show everybody out there. This is not part of the new core range. The, the fully 25 has been around for right. about you know, a year mm. or two. So this is here, but it's also not for the foreseeable future uh -oh. going anywhere. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, I know where it's going. <laughs> it's, uh, you're talking about stuff. Um, there's, a, there's a Ron Burgundy quote right there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love Scotch. He's one of my heroes. Scott. Uh, Scott, Scott, Scott. This is really amazing. It, it's absolutely exquisite. It's Ooh. very delicate, but it's so delicious. Man. It's just got everything I want. It's it's Scott. Yeah. So there's a lot of lemon yeah. in this. The difference between the 15 and the 18 what? was very pronounced. The difference between the 18 and the 25 is much more refined and delicate. So what's the difference in the maturation here? It's honestly, according to the 
the notes on the, on the, the forms that you gave us, the marketing stuff, the maturation is the same, Malcolm. What's, what changes here? What's the next? I, 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 well, again, it's down to positioning and where it is. You know? um, it, essentially, it's, it's the same. It's just you know, time and place. And, and, I get uh, old leather and... Sorry? I get old leather books on it, and it's just it, it just uh, smells much more deeper. It's so, it's so straight away. It's a lovely deep ebony color. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So, you know, of course, when you look at it, it's inviting straight into the glass. You know, just the color alone. And then you take that in that aroma, and it's just such a, you know, it just it really opens up and it develops. It's much more oily on the glass. It's, it's got a really yeah, nice lemon yeah, zest for me, for. too. I love it. Yeah, yeah. I'm, so I'm looking for I'm looking for something. You know, big and robust and oily. You know, and that's you know that's that's what we're producing here at Paul. So, uh, big, how big, much of this you got put back, Malcolm? <laughs> 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 Can we buy a barrel of this? We, we've been looking at buying a barrel of something. I mean, uh, you, got, you got one of these bears in your backyard? Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I know. <laughs> Wait, could you see Sean? I got Malcolm on the phone. Uh, <laughs> you knew it was going to come up at one point. Hey, just, I'll tell you what. <laughs> just so you guys are aware, you're not reading comments, but someone just said Sean just had a whiskey gasm. Okay. He, he literally did. <laughs> <laughs> Not for us. Wow. It's gonna be my new ringtone. <laughs> we want you to say it real clear, Malcolm. We're gonna record it. <laughs> <laughs> I have to say, Malcolm, you you guys over there, and you know, and honestly, all the distillers out there, the, the patience just to be able to put something back and for years and wait and see what happens. I mean, that's got to be hard just to see. I mean, I, I know there's things in between and stuff. But. It is, you know. I mean, the fruits of your labor don't, you know, you don't do it on a Monday and you find out on a Friday. You know, you're not talking days or weeks; you're talking years. So yeah, you have to be very patient in this in this job, you know. So. And, um, uh, so walk me through, like I'm, I'm a story I was in here. Like, when this came out. walk me through a story. Like you're going through and you're walking through that the warehouse and you're, you're looking at stuff that you know you put away years ago, and you're, yeah. you're like, you know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna see how this guy's maturing right now and taste, and you're tasting it and stuff, and then you're like, you know what, not yet, not yet. You need a couple more years, et cetera, whatever. I mean, is that kind of like a daily thing for you? Um. <laughs> Well, really, what we do is, I mean, when we fill up here, we get in those the spirit. You make sure the spirit's right, you know, everything's correct with that. You know the cask before you fill it. So you check the cask, everything's okay there. You fill the cask, put it in the warehouse, and you leave it a number of years, okay? And then, you know, let, let time and tide and alchemy do its its job. And, and uh, really, once it gets to a certain age, then you're going to start looking to see how things are progressing. You know, what you're going to do with it, and potentially is that going to be for... You know, the 15, or, or you know, we'll leave it longer and do the 25. Or, you know, you've, you've identified a cask and you think, well, that's com something completely different. You know, that's a single cask bottling. So, um, something that, you know, unfortunately I don't do every day, but I do most days. <laughs> I love to do it every day, but um, you're always looking at it. You're always making sure that what you've got, you know, I've, I've, I've nearly 25,000 casks here, three and a half million liters of alcohol. Wow. So. If I was to test that every day, I've crossed the line. <laughs> <laughs> Atta boy. <You're> right. <laughs> <laughs> every time you come home, <laughs> you're pissed. <laughs> you're pissed. Oh, no. you steamed. You're steamed. So let me ask you though, Malcolm, uh, when when you distill, when you do a distillate run, you're distilling. You, is there ever a time where, in the back of your mind, you're like, "We're doing a run, and this is this is going to be for my 30." You know, I, I want to put this one down for 40 years or 50. You ever have that in the back of your mind? I also read a comment that you had made in another interview that about knowing how your new make is going to act or react with a particular wood. And I never thought about that. I mean, from from your you know experience perspective, you know what kind of woods are going to actually make your whiskey that distillate better than other woods and, and that just kind of caught me off guard thinking i never really thought about it from that perspective yeah i know you know okay you you, you do know run it, it, it you know the consistency is you know 
obviously paramount that you're trying to get it consistent as you can. Mm-hmm. So then the wood comes into play. So you've a fair idea when you're filling a run of different types of cash, what you're going to do with it ultimately. It doesn't always lend itself to be that way, but you know, nine times out of ten it will. And you know, you're as it progresses, you're checking on it. So, you know, some of these big, heavy, you know, second fill, you know you're going to have these, or some big wood, you're going to have these for a long time, and, you know, you know you're going to do something slightly different with that, but, you know, it really, it's, it's, you, have a, you have a good feel when, you, when you're when you doing something, how it's going to progress. Um, mm. And then you get, as I say, you get something different that, you know, it defies, you know, all what you're doing and, you know, the consistency and it's doing its own thing, and then you, you want to harness that and you want to kind of, nurture that and see how that that turns out and you know that's going to be into something completely different there. Malcolm the the one thing I find interesting about your job versus my job because I, I I'm a chef by training and so I, I get immediate results from what I do yeah. I, I know if it yeah. tastes good I know if the if the customers like it yeah. is there is there a day when you wake up and you're like I've got this this thing I want to try and and it, maybe it's a different barreling or just something unique about it, and you're like, you know what, I want to put that up on a shelf and see what happens. And do you put that up there knowing that you may not be the guy that puts that in a bottle? Uh, you know, uh, it may be somebody else. Yeah, no, I mean, I'm, 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 I'm laying down, I mean, I'm 56, okay, so I'm, uh, I'm laying down stuff now that, you know, people are going to drink that, you know, I probably won't, I won't be around, you know. Yeah. And it's quite, it's quite a sobering thought, you know. And I mean, it's great, and it's, you know, in a way, it's good because it's your legacy that you're leaving. You don't know that for truth, though, Malcolm. Maybe your your whiskey makes you live longer. Well, I'm 147. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I look 56, to be honest. Yeah, good on you, brother. <laughs> well, that's when you're, you know, you're going through your fruits of your labor and you've got all this time to wait. That's why we've got 18, so it builds time. You know, I can drink that while I'm waiting to see how the 25 is turning out, you know? <laughs> Well, I can tell you the 25 is turning out great. So <laughs> while while you've been talking, I, I poured a, a, a small dram of the 21 just to compare it up against this 25 because I'm getting on this old, the, the old, the 25, it smells old and refined. I get old, dark ink, leather and, and wood and, and wood. I mean, just, just subtle wood, not so, like, uh, yeah. I think, but you. nosing it against the 21, it, I gotta be honest, it really makes the 21 smell young. It smells it much <laughs> more fruitier. That's like, the funny thing. Um, so okay. the, the 25 is exquisite. It's, it's really the 25, good. The 21 is still fantastic, do, but the, do the 25 we, do we is more. 25 is going for in price. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Steph, how, how much am I? How, how much am I gonna have to pay? Educate me. Twenty-five. Um, I think it floats right around between five and six hundred American. No. Wow. Uh, You're gonna have to give up a kidney for me. <laughs> uh, the last time I priced that on eBay, it was only like two hundred bucks. <laughs> what the kidney? Yeah. <laughs> for my kidney, not a kidney. My kidney. Five or six hundred. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, thank you for sharing everything with us today, guys. It's, mm. it's, it's oh, an excellent. amazing ride. It's ridiculously well, okay, good. You know, apologies for the technical glitch here. Hey, we worked through it. It's all good. I honestly kind of expected it. Yeah, I don't know what's happened to your life, but thank God for cellular. Yep. Yeah. yeah. There you go now, eh? There you go. So one thing before before we really get down to, to shutting this down, I wanted to make one comment, uh, Malcolm. We've got another whiskey tuber that uh, shoots out of San Francisco. His name is Eric Waite. He's got a trip planned to Scotland here in a couple months. I want to say July, and he's going to be strolling through your uh, through your distillery. So keep an okay. eye out for him. I want to tell him to definitely try to catch you and, and at least shake your hand uh, and have I'll, an opportunity. I'll, I'll the distillery won't be working, though. I mean, we've got silent, but will be open. I might not be on the right day. I might not be on the right month either. He, it's his trip, but I know that he had he had made a comment way early on the on the chat, chat that he was going to be coming by and and making a stop in Old Pulteney, and I wanted him to make sure that he knew who you were and, and you uh, yeah, keep an eye yeah, out. Yeah. If he... Definitely, you're more welcome come in. I'll be here July and all, all, be all the summer. But just for your information for your, your viewers, there we we will be silent in July, all of July and half of August. So you, but, I mean, we are we are taking people in. People can come in and still have a look at the story. So I mean, everybody's welcome. You know, we we 
everybody's our VIP, then they come in and we, we do look after people usually. What do you do during that down period? Is it, is it more of a time to clean the distillery, clean the stills to kind well, of reset? Usually, you know, any, any, any you know, maintenance, uh, a lot of these vessels are pressure, and they're pressure tested, and, you know, it's mandatory checks by insurance and things like that. <laughs> Um, right. Any upgrades? Any upgrades that we're going to do? It's all we've done during the silent season. So. Plus, you uh, like to get a little fishing in. Uh, no, I, I'm, I don't take any holidays from the back end. To be honest, I'm like, oh, I should be better then. Really. <laughs> if, if, you, if you come to the states, we'll take you fishing. We're not guaranteeing you're going to catch anything. You may not catch anything. <laughs> not with Mark in the boat. You, you'll catch a good time. I guarantee yeah. that. The invite's <laughs> always there. But, um, Steph, thank you so much for setting this up and, and, and letting us awesome. have an opportunity to meet Malcolm and, and talk to him and get to know old Pulteney a little bit more intimately, um, sharing some of these whiskeys that are coming to our shores, and we're going to be able to see start seeing on our, on our shelves We're soon. really excited about Stupid it. Stupid excited about that. Um, really excited about seeing you next week. So come I home. I can't wait to hang out with you guys next week. <laughs> Uh, we're welcome. <laughs> On the flip side, you're always welcome here, but we hopefully will be coming there um, soon. Uh, so we're trying our yeah, best. Yeah, I look forward to that. I'll we are looking, we're trying our hardest. To, it's just, I don't know if you've looked at a globe. You're kind of out there. <laughs> but I'll tell you what, <laughs> the, the only <laughs> other distillery person that we've interviewed is Wolfburg. And, and that's kind of in your neck of the woods. That's so. true. Uh, yeah, it's not far away. It's not far away. They're they're good people up there too. So yeah, yeah, don't worry. Yeah. Good neighbors. Good neighbors. Good neighbors. Absolutely. Yeah, good neighbors. We we would love to come visit you both. So well, you do that. You what do that. Malcolm doesn't know is I'm giving you his uh, I'm giving you guys his mobile number. Oh, oh that's, that's a horrible idea. You're in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Especially with the time difference. I know that's good. What Steph doesn't know is I haven't gone anywhere. What's a mobile? It's like fair enough. Fair enough. That's a good comeback for that. Mobile. Surefire way to get Malcolm to text you back is tell them that you just got some Maryland blue crabs and you need somebody to come eat with. Uh huh. I. That's what I make my crab cakes with, Malcolm. Yeah. Yeah. I think I, 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 I do not States. mess around. No. Uh, okay. If you come to Indianapolis, you will eat the best you've ever eaten in your life. Yeah. I guarantee. We're going to drink the best we've ever. <laughs> hey, I'll, I'll, I'll toast to that. My Cheers. <laughs> no, so. Yeah. Steph, get his butt over here. I'll, I'll tell you what. If you, Malcolm, if you come over, we'll have a whiskey dinner that will make the other ones look like child's play. Yeah, that's no very true. And, and I don't mess around with whiskey dinners. Hell, I'll put on a kilt for that. <laughs> Speaking of which, we we need to work on our dinner. Yes, we do. We will. Okay. Uh, I'll tell you what. Like now you got Malcolm, so like I'll just hang out the parking lot. <laughs> no, you won't. No, you won't. Because you're as much a character as Malcolm is. I think we need to. Steph, I think we should fly Malcolm over here for the dinner. You know what? I like the sound of that. I'm, I'm going to talk to my boss and watch just for the sake of watching him have his heart attack. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> He's like, hey, 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 wait, 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 wait. what's going on? Well, already spent it. It's already gone. Well, that's yeah. assuming Malcolm wants to be away from his family, too, you know. <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah, he did just go to Singapore. Guys, I, I, again, heartfelt apologies for the technical difficulties. We worked yeah. it out. It's fine. It's nothing I, on you. I, um, I, I am so appreciative that you allowed for us to come spend some time. And this was... Wow, we spent some a, a nice amount of time, and I'm yeah. just very, very grateful that you, you know, you considered doing this and you yeah, let us come play. Very much so. Us. Very much. So. I, I, I also agree with Steph there. That's, that's guys, we we really appreciate your time. I mean, I know it's it's getting late over there, and it's true. Yeah. You know, we had to cut out of work early, but I, I really enjoyed this. Totally worth it. Was great. I Thank mean, so we, we, we made your distillery kind of open to some folks that might not ever have a chance to come over and say, I saw, I, I, this was perfect. We it, we got a chance to go through some great whiskeys. You guys have been Lord. gracious hosts and guests on our show. Um, I can't to, wait to host your booth next week. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I am very excited. 
You're in trouble, Steph. You have yes, no idea what can trouble. of worms you're uh, opening I, up. I don't know if you want to let Mark and I loose on your booth. <laughs> We're going to sell more old pee and ball worms than you ever sold. You're, you're, you're going to overpour with problems. <laughs> Mike's yeah. going to be like in a costume of Bob Blair. He's, <laughs> what, that dude's a super fan. <laughs> yeah, he is. He's going to so be the, uh, the mascot, right? right? Their crew, Malcolm. It's like this, he's like a Bob Blair groupie. He, needs, uh, he is. We have to make sure he knows that I was drinking Bob Blair 64 just he's a few on. days ago. Um, just to watch him, like, ugh. Oh, he said he like, will. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> bring the Bob Blair uh, bottle of costume. <laughs> <laughs> Malcolm, I think you're making some incredible whiskey there. I'm really excited to see the new lineup hit the U.S. shores. Um, yep, thank, I'm, you, uh, thank you very much. Enjoyed going second. through the lineup. And we're looking yeah, forward to coming to the distillery hopefully next year. Yeah, so. all right. Yeah, no, great. Put us to work. Uh, all right, guys. Well, hang on. We're going to talk to you in just a second, Malcolm and Steph. Guys, thanks for watching. Appreciate thank you, all. you guys. Really you guys are the best. Guys tuning in. Catch the, the replay. Really okay. happy that some of you guys that never get to see the live show got to hang out with us. Yep. Yeah, yeah so right for that, man. Look forward to the new lineup. It's delicious. Cheers. We'll see you guys. Man. Okay.